Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and it is late in the evening again. It's about 7 p.m. It's uh, just you know busy, busy around here, and I keep saying, oh, we got to do a video. I'm during the best time of the day, and here we are trying to fit one in late at night. But we're going to get into a colony that was supposed to be for honey production, and it's uh, got you know all the way down to a single brood now. You know, last year we'd have at least had another deep box on top of this, and you're fixing to see kind of you know what we're seeing a lot this year especially in this yard this is our poorest yard and um, there's certain you know, geographical reasons for that location 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 um, also there's other beekeepers in this area but I mean last year the bees did fantastic over here I pulled two deep boxes of honey from our best and you know colonies that were average I was getting at least a deep box off of um, the, you know a little below average actually in size but last year was exceptional. This year definitely has been a bummer. We've had some issues with queens of the last round or so um, coming back. They're just not finding their way back home. But the weather is nice now, but we are just about to the point where the honey flow is over. I mm -hmm. set down a frame today and there was a mild robbing going on on that honey frame. So got to love it. All right, so as you can see, We've got a bit of honey up here, a little bit. We've got stuff here in the middle supers quite a bit. Out here towards the edge, it doesn't look like there's a drop in these edge frames. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one. There's a drone that just landed on my valve. Yeah, this one feels like there's very little weight in it at all. I need to find my other hive tools. I don't like this one here as well, but it works for sure. Yeah, there's just there's hardly anything in that at all, which is a bummer, you know. And hindsight's 2020. If I'd have known the nectar flow was going to be this bad, we probably would have broke things down and try to sell some more queens. But whatever. I know a lot of people keep asking about queens and stuff like that. Um, we may open that up to a degree, but we're probably not going to do any small orders. You know, it feels like I've probably got about five frames maybe that are extractable in that one maybe and, and looking into this one right here looking down into it i'm thinking there's probably about four and a half to five extractable combs in that so that's a bit of a bummer maybe there's something down into the deep box i'm uh, also going to go down and check and see what the brood looks like down below I had someone today ask me if we feed while we're producing honey, and the answer is yes and no. So there are a lot of colonies over here that have been fed all through April and May. Colonies like this one down here being one of them, where, you know, that colony right now is about seven frames strong, if, especially with the way the flow's been. If we wanted to fed it, it'd probably be like three frames strong right now. Um, but, you know, you don't feed colonies that are producing honey for you. Oh, that looks really nice. That is really nice. Look at that. They're capping it right there. Now, if you'll notice, there's two types of cappings on this frame. It's all pretty much the same, but if you see all this nice whitish looking capping, that is called dry capping. This section right here that you can kind of see the honey through it, that's called wet capping. And then you can see some of them that are kind of a mixture of both of them. There really isn't it's not really a big deal either way. It's just nice that it's capped. However, back in the day, there used to be beekeepers that would selectively breed colonies that would have just the white dry cappings because it does look prettier if you're wanting to sell cut comb honey, which that's pretty interesting. But, you know, that was before Varroa, small hive beetle, tracheal mite, and a lot of these, some of these newer viruses that have come over and murder hornets and all that kind of stuff oh man I gotta love the news and social media um, but anyways before I laugh out loud uh, you know, back in those days you could select for things like that and it was okay now we've got to actively select for colonies that have more resistance to disease more survival you know focus on survivability than you know kind of things that doesn't really matter because it doesn't affect the taste of your honey. That's a nice looking comb right there. 
that will be absolutely delicious on somebody's toast or on some, and some honey caramels. All right, so let's get down in here. I don't know how well the bees will react to this invasion. Now, some of you might think, well, this isn't a very populous colony or hive right here. A lot of these hives have kind of got a resurgence in the last month, but they, they took a nosedive where we weren't feeding them at all, and they, they really needed something in April, and they didn't get it. All right, now we've got this, which is, you know, really the bees section that I like to leave. Even though we have the queen down below, typically I leave the second deep for the bees. A lot of times I would have a colony that, if we had a good honey year, that would produce a box of foundation right here. And then, you know, I'll leave them a lot of stuff, but I don't know. We can't take too much. We gotta leave some honey for the bees. We're also gonna be splitting as well. You know, and there's nothing really to take down here anyways. You know, so this is gonna go towards when we split this colony in half. There's gonna, there's some honey up in here. There's some bee bread up in here. There's also just some empty uh, brood cells, but this, you know, frames like this are perfect for splits. We have capped honey up here, a little bit over towards here. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a flow going on, but it's it's very light, and I don't expect it to pick up anymore. If anything, just go down. We are still getting a little bit of pollen coming in, which is excellent. And we got, you know, some bee bread down in here, so that's very crucial for healthy split making. So, you know, this box right here, maybe we'll find a fully capped frame of honey in here. We might take one or two for ourselves, but more than likely, this is all going to go towards uh, splitting the colony. So... You know, if I'm, so if I'm guessing on how much honey we're going to get off of this colony this year. <sighs> maybe 30 pounds. It's a bummer. Alright, let's get down here and see what the queen's doing. Now this queen is a 2019 queen. You know, and that's not super heavy. By the, the, the feel of that deep box, we're looking at probably, oh, I don't know, maybe half full, honey. All right. Well, now looky here, everybody. That's kind of a bummer. I didn't put an upper entrance in this one with the excluder. And there must have been some drones that emerged in some of the frames up here and they got stuck in the excluder and the bees killed them. Uh, oh well. Life as a bee is pretty crazy but yeah definitely if you have any drones up above an excluder they have to have a way of getting out or they're stuck. All right. I tell you what, the only silver lining I think to this year is the fact that swarming has really hasn't really been that hard to control this year. The, no hives have been have been getting plugged out at all. They haven't felt the stimuli to do so. This is really just not the time to be in the bees. You can totally do it, but I've had several of them tap my hands already. Yeah, I'm fixing to get stung. Wow, what a gal. That's a nice looking frame of brood right there. So we're still gonna be able to get some nice splits off of this colony, either expand the bee yard, make some more bees to be able to sell more nukes and stuff next year. That's just excellent. You know, and single brood management does work, but it is management. It's not throw an excluder on and walk away and all right, things are gonna work out. Well, that's just beekeeping right there. Usually, as my dad always said, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. My grandpa said that too. And they both are pretty smart guys. Not beekeepers though, definitely not beekeepers. <laughs> 
All right, lots of larvae down in there. Gorgeous, healthy looking larvae. And this is, wow, this one, frame right here is wax foundation. Still got the wires going through the bottom. I haven't done one of these in a long time. Just gorgeous brood. Absolutely gorgeous. So what we're gonna do is pull the honey off of here and you know, other colonies and take care of that all at once. And as soon as we do that, we're gonna split the colonies as quickly as we can. We're going to treat them. We're going to, um, if, you know, if the queens aren't looking like this, we're gonna requeen them. There's already been some colonies I've designated for that, but when you're getting brood patterns like what was on that black plastic frame and that much brood and you know that's still a, a, a really nice queen right there exactly what you want but you know she's probably not even a year old yet this queen probably uh we probably made her in summer sometime last year i remember dropping the cell down in here but i can't tell you if it was june or july so she's fixing to hit her first birthday but she's doing a fantastic job nice you know, we could dig through here and do all kinds of stuff. I'm not seeing any signs of swarming. It's pretty typical for this time of the year. You can get some swarming this time of the year here, but you know, especially in this yard where the honey flows just about over, you just don't get that packed feeling. The queen's got room to lay. There's still plenty of room for them to put nectar if it did come in. Um, the colonies are gonna start slowly declining at this point just due to the lack of pollen. The pollen flow is definitely um, slacked off a degree. We're gonna start feeding pollen patties and sugar syrup here very shortly and show you all that stuff. Um, it's gonna be fun to show you that, but it ain't gonna be fun to feed in warm summer days. I got it, Laurel. She was just curious. Anyways, oh, went back to you, didn't it? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to probably go ahead and cut this video. There's no reason to inspect this colony further. What you, if you want to make sure there's no swarm cells, all you have to do is pop that bottom board, tip it up, look underneath and see if there's any developing swarm cells. I don't think this colony is swarming. It doesn't have enough of the things that cause swarming to happen um, for, that, for that to be going on right now. So what I'm going to do is just to throw all this back together. Colony looks great. Um, you know, wish it had a little bit more honey on top. and. But there ain't nothing you can do about that some years. Uh, there's always next year. Thanks for watching the videos. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below.